Well, grace and peace to you from Grace and Peace to You Gathering here in Lexington, Virginia. I hope you're doing well. Uh, happy Fourth of July. I'm going to call today Happy Dependence Day on the Lord and Happy Independence from slavery to our sinful nature because in Christ we are set free and if you are free in him you are free indeed if the son has set you free you are free indeed that's what the book of John 8 tells us in God's word let me pray for this time father help us to understand that you are more than enough we are more than enough because you are more than enough thank you that you have declared independence from our sin by becoming sin for us you who knew no sin became sin for us so we can have a right standing with you so what the word tells us and that's what i know is true from experience and help us to understand our dependence on you for all things in jesus name i pray amen uh, back in the day representative of Yahoo had a gathering with employees um, about attitudes and uh, my former boss at the time when I worked with the Young Life Ministry showed this conference gathering information from Yahoo and uh, the whole idea was you can either live from an attitude of scarcity or live from an attitude of abundance and really that's a that's a God perspective that's a Christian perspective that's a perspective of one who follows Jesus Christ now we always li live in an attitude of abundance even though we might be hard-pressed on every side even though we might be going through trials and tribulations even though things aren't always crumbling the right way we can live in an attitude of abundance and that's really what this message is about more than enough we can live in an attitude of abundance and not in an attitude of scarcity when you live in an attitude of scarcity you're bitter you complain you don't see the forest because the trees I can go on and on but you get the drift so let's look at God's Word and see what it says about Jesus being more than enough and we're gonna look uh, several different places John 6 is where we'll start a huge crowd was following Jesus because they saw the signs he was performing by healing the sick so Jesus went up a mountain and sat down there with his disciples now the Passover a Jewish festival was near therefore when Jesus looked up and noticed a huge crowd coming toward him he asked Philip where will we buy bread so that these people can eat he asked this to test him for he himself knew what he was going to do Philip answered 200 denarii which is 200 days worth of wages worth of bread wouldn't be enough to for each of them to have a little one of his disciples Andrew Simon Peter's brother said to him there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish but what are they among for so many then Jesus said have the people sit down there was plenty of grass in that place so they sat down and the men numbered about 5,000 then Jesus took the loaves and after giving thanks he distributed them to those who were seated so also with the fish as much as they wanted when they were full he told his disciples collect the leftovers so that nothing is wasted so they collected them and filled twelve baskets with pieces from the five barley loaves that were left over by those who had eaten when the people saw the sign that he had done they said this really is the prophet who was to come into the world therefore when Jesus knew that they were about to come and take him by force and make him king 
he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Five loaves of bread, two fish, fed literally thousands because Jesus was involved. Jesus, who created the laws of physics, who created the ways that we create food because he gave us a mind to do so with, within the forces of nature and within the resources that we have, this Jesus did the miraculous, just like he turned the, the water into wine. He is able because he is outside of his laws and he can use his laws to create things even faster. So when Jesus is involved, we have more than enough. We have leftovers even. And I, I have been in dire straits before, and God is always, he is always. And I've known that he has been pursuing me for years. But I was finally saved when I was a junior in high school. <coughs> Excuse me. And from that point forward of truly, truly realizing and then growing in relationship with my creator, there has never been a time that I've gone through dire straits, hard times where there was not enough to make it all the way around. And he orchestrated ways uh, that maybe on the surface didn't look like to others that I was where I need to be but he always provided Jehovah Jireh he is the provider there is always more than enough and he always rewards those who seek him that's what God's word says so I testify to the truth of that today he is more than enough. And because of that, we are. Now let's look at another place. And we're going to look at 1 Kings 17, and then we're going to go to 2 Kings 4. First Kings 17. Now Elijah, the Tishbite, from the Gilead settlers, said to Ahab, the wicked king, as the Lord God of Israel lives, I stand before him, and there will be no dew or rain during these years except by my command. And after he said that, the Lord sent him to a place to hide. And the Lord sent him to a place called Zarephath that belonged to Sidon and told him to stay there. Look, I have commanded a woman who is a widow to, prov to provide for you there. So Elijah got up and went to Zarephath. When he arrived at the city gate, there was a widow woman gathering wood. Elijah called to her and said, Please bring me a little water and a cup and let me drink. As she went to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a piece of bread in your hand but she said as the Lord your God lives I don't have anything baked only a handful of flour in the jar and a bit of oil in the jug just now I am gathering a couple of sticks in order to prepare for myself and my son so we can eat it and die they had the very last of their supply because there was dire straits in the land because of this wicked king and the God allowed judgment over the land. And Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go out and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf from it and bring it out to me. Afterward, you may make some for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord God of Israel says. The flour jar will not become empty, and the oil jug will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. So she proceeded to do according to the word of Elijah. Then the woman Elijah and her household ate for many days. The flour jar did not become empty, and the oil jug did not run dry, according to the word of the Lord he had spoken through Elijah. 
more than enough. Let's see, 1 Corinthians 1, 25 says, God's weakness is stronger than man's strength. You may make your 5, 10, 15 year plans and squirrel away what you can and do all that you can to make it happen and be prepared. The things come. And disasters happen. People lose everything. But God's weakness is stronger than man's strength. He is able. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. And he is Jehovah Jireh. The provider. Let's look over a little bit to a very, another similar story. In 2 Kings 4. One of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah, not Elijah. Elijah was in the other story. This is Elisha, the next prophet that Elijah had picked out to follow him. Your servant, my husband, has died. You know that your servant feared the Lord. Now the creditor is coming to take away my two children as his slaves. Elijah asked her, what can I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in the house? She said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go and borrow empty containers from everyone, from all your neighbors, and do not get just a few. Then go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour oil into all these containers. Set the full ones to one side, so she left. After she had shut the door behind her and her sons and kept bringing her containers, she kept pouring. When they were full, she said to her son, Bring me another container. But he replied, there aren't any more. Then the oil stopped. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go, sell the oil and pay your debt. You and your sons can live on the rest. God is more than enough. Let's look in Judges. Let's look at uh, what he did with Gideon. And we're going to look at Judges 7. What's uh, cool about this story is that in a time where things weren't right, he picked a man named Gideon to lead the charge. And actually several people s stood up and wanted to follow and help bring about the change but the Lord decided to only use 300 people to defeat many and without going in and reading everything the Lord kept winnowing down the number of people that he wanted to use and at one point he said we still have too many and in Judges 7 verse 7 The Lord said to Gideon, I will deliver you with 300 men who lapped the hand, who lapped, it was a thing they, they could either, they could drink water different ways, and these particular people lapped the water. I will hand the Midianites over to you, but everyone else to, is to go home. The Lord took a small number of against so many and delivered his people God is enough his weakness is stronger than man's strength the Lord provides David and his slingshot his stones more than enough against this monster Goliath David and his band of mighty men small in number in the beginning God is more than enough Elijah going back to Elijah in 1st Kings 18 he went up against 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Ashera 
God was enough. They tried to get their false God to do something that only the one true God could. God is enough. He's more than enough. And you are as well. Now let's round this up. Philippians 4.19 says, My God will supply all of your needs out of his rich bounty. Romans 8, 32, one of my favorite verses. He who did not spare his own son, but offered him up for us all, how will he not also with Jesus grant us everything? More than enough. And lastly, 2 Corinthians 12. In verse 9. And I want you to remember this. When times may get rough. My grace is sufficient for you. This is Jesus speaking. For power is perfected in weakness. Therefore I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses. For the Christ's power may reside in me. So I take pleasure in weaknesses, insults, catastrophes, persecutions, and, and pressures because of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And why? Because Jesus is more than enough. My friend, live in the attitude of abundance today found in a life hidden in Christ. Don't live in an attitude of scarcity. Jesus is more than enough. Grace and peace to you from Grace and Peace to You Gathering. Let me know how I can pray for you. We have a prayer page you can join as well. You can post prayers or just message me. Hope you have a great day.